This is the $204,500 fourth edition of the Miller Lite Cleveland Classic for three-year-old pacing Colts at one mile. They're heading for the post. The gate is rolling. And that field moves in behind the wings of the starting gate. It's Tibet with Dave Pallone, Smoke, Robertson, Kelly O'Donnell, Broadway, Blue, and Donovan Jr. Sure, Cam, Joe Wesley Jr. Keystone and Deborah Robin Miller. Faldo, Hanover, Dan Ross. Miller's Levi with Joe Adamski on the outside. Lumber, Hanover, Bruce Regal. Off that second tier, Life Sign and John Campbell. Columbus Avenue, Richard Wosio. The field swings into the top of the stretch. And here they come for the start of the 1993 Miller Lite Cleveland Classic. They're on their way. They're all fin pacing Miller's Levi first away. Broadway blue between horses. Moving up at the rail is Tibet. They go in the clubhouse turn. It's Tibet has that lead a half up on the outside. Broadway blue second. And on the rail life sign is now third between horses. Smoke Robinson is four. Out three wide Miller's Levi along the rail is Columbus Avenue. Then comes Lumber Hanover. Followed by Sure Cam, Keystone Endeavor, and Faldo Hanover. They're at the quarter mile mark. And taking him over there, Tibet cuts that early pace in 26 and 2. Into the far turn the first time. As Broadway Blue racing second a length and a quarter. Life sign is right there, third. In on the rail, Columbus Avenue is fourth. On the outside, Miller's Levi, fifth. On the rail, six is Sure Cam. And along the outside, Smoke Robertson. They're in the lane, coming down for the halfway point of the race. And as they pass the stands, here he comes on the outside. It's life sign going right for the top for Campbell. They're out here at the half in ooh, 55 and 1. Has the advantage of a length and three quarters. Tobet is racing second, a length and a half. Broadway Blue is third. In along the rail. And it's Columbus Avenue fourth. On the outside, Miller's Little Levi racing a fifth. Sure, Cam sixth. Then it's Smoker Robertson. Keystone Endeavor. Oid Lumber, Hanover, and Faldo Hanover. They're in the back stretch. Roaring down to the three quarter mile mark. And it's life sign out there by two. Tibet is second on the outside. Coming on is Broadway Blue, third, three quarters. 123 and three, unbelievable three quarters on the turn. They're coming home. And it's life sign and John Campbell. They've got it by a length. Tibet right there with them. Broadway Blue poised on the outside. And now tightening it is Columbus Avenue. They're in the stretch. They're coming home for the money and the time in the Miller Lite Cleveland Classic. Out on top, it's life sign. A length and three quarters, two. It's life sign living the high life tonight in a new track record. One, 51 and four fifth seconds. And parading before you, you have the official winner of the fourth edition of the Miller Lite Cleveland Classic. Pacing that mile in a new Northfield Park. And Miller Lite Cleveland Classic record 151 and a four fifths. Number nine life sign, life sign as a son of Abercrombie. Has recorded his sixth victory of the year. Owned by the Brittany Farms. Trained by Gene Regal, driven tonight by Hall of Famer Mr. John Campbell. Going trackside, making the trophy presentation to Life Sign and uh, his connections. We have the Akron area distributor of the Miller Brewing Company, Mr. Jack Tremonti. He's accompanied by the area manager for Miller Brewing, Tim Dvorak and his wife, Annie, and also the chairman of Northfield Park Harness, Mr. Carl Milstein. Trifecta 9 1 into 3 pays $28.20. The 9 1 Perfecta $5.40.
Most time for the next race is 14 minutes away. On tonight's 14th race, Trifecta and the Perfecto wagering, there are no changes. And looking ahead to the night's 15th and final, on which you'll have Superfecto wagering in race 15, also no changes. Okay, John, just an awesome performance there by Life Sign, a national season's mark, the fastest mile by any three-year-old uh, Colt Pacer on a half-mile track this year. Had to be very happy about the way things uh, broke for you early in the race. Yeah, well, he, oh, I'm sorry. He, he really makes his own luck. He can get out of the gate very well, and this is the third time he's had uh, trail in position, which is kind of remarkable, and uh, he follows the rail horse out real well, and uh, once we got around the first turn and I was sure that I would get clear, I, I was quite confident then. Right, and he really paced on after he took the lead. Uh, you didn't really slow the pace that much. He went a 28 second, uh, 28 and change third quarter and 28 and change home. He really had a ton of pace tonight. Yeah, he's, he's not a horse that really relaxes when he makes the front. He wants to keep on rolling. If you, if you take too much hold of him, it's hard to get him started back up. And uh, He's uh, getting much better. Last year he wouldn't race in the front at all, but this year it's, he seemed to adapt to it very well. Okay, step over to this screen and we'll take a look at the replay, John. Of course, the one and the three leaving very alertly. Yeah, we're pacing pretty good around the first turn, and uh, even though they're going that much, he's quite comfortable. And he handles uh, the half-mile track real well, which we're hoping is uh, to our advantage. Okay, worked out very well for you right here in this full field where uh, there's really no traffic to the outside of you. They're going so fast on the front end, I guess none of them could really keep up. Well, yeah, 26 and 2 sorts out a lot of the traffic. And you knew pretty much they were battling for a seat behind you at the half right here, I guess, right? Well, I, I was pretty sure that uh, if I let uh, Donnie in that uh, the second quarter would be a little slower. And uh, I was just waiting to see how it developed. And uh, I wanted to keep him covered as long as I could. But, of course, was starting to come from behind. I had to move him. Okay, and here you tip at the top of the stretch for the first time. Uh, blow directly to the lead. I guess Dave didn't really put up much resistance. Uh, he, uh, a seat behind you is a pretty good place to be at that point in the race. Well, yeah, David did to use his, his Colt to, to have him in that position hard, so I didn't think he'd be looking to go the second quarter as much. Okay, so we're going into the third quarter here. 55 and one half, uh, obviously very, very fast. You said this horse doesn't really relax that much on the lead. You were pretty much cruising uh, 28 and two third quarter, 123 and three three quarters. Yeah, he's doing this all on his own. He, he's just up in the bit, and he feels very comfortable. Okay, the Tibet and Broadway Blue were able to stay in contact with you despite the very fast fractions. Uh, did you feel any pressure here coming to the top of the stretch? Well, I knew they were right in my back, and I certainly wasn't going to let him relax at all at this point. Uh, uh, I wanted to keep him pace and just keep his attention. And, uh, he, you know, he responded very well in the stretch, and, you know, he won quite handily. But... Uh, those Colts are right there. He, he didn't want to make a mistake or right. fall asleep or he could get beat. And he cruises home, it looks like, by about two and a half, three lengths, 151 and four. John, was this his, his first time with the Cheetah? No, he's raced in at uh, the Meadowlands as, as well. Okay, John, you might get some argument that uh, you're the greatest driver in harness racing history, but there's little argument that you're the greatest ambassador any sport could have. John, it's great to have you here at Northfield. Oh, thanks a lot, Dave. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, now a few words from Gene Regal. Yeah, they're calling for the whip, and John throws it. <laughs> okay, you have to. Yeah. Okay. All right, now I'm joined by winning tr uh, trainer Gene Regal. Gene, we were here in the same spot about exactly a year ago as uh, Western Hanover took the third edition of the Miller Lite Cleveland Classic, and I asked you the same question. Now, the Little Brown Jug is one race <laughs> that has eluded you, one of the very few races that's eluded you in your career. Uh, you lost by a very, very slim margin, obviously, last season. You have to feel very good going into this year's Little Brown Jug and the Triple Crown. Yeah, my colt uh, went an awful mile last week, but uh, he went a great mile here tonight. And so uh, I hope I can just keep him like he is. I think he'd be very tough at Delaware. And you just said it last week in the Art Rooney final, uh, you guys put away your longtime nemesis presidential ball, and really he had the trip. You guys were the outside for the last half, and uh, still no problem, won by a length in the stretch. Do you feel right now you have the best three-year-old colt pacer in the country? Uh, if he isn't the best, he's second best. You know, President, presidential ball is a good colt, and, uh, but on even terms, I think I got a better colt than he is. Okay, and uh, the rumor has it you might take the week off next week with the Adios being two heats. Is that true? Yeah, we're going to give him a week off uh, next week, and uh, then, of course, the following week's elimination of the cane. 
All right, best of luck to you as the Triple Crown approaches. I hope to uh, be here with you for a third time again after next year's Cleveland Classic. Congratulations, Gene Regal. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Congratulations once again, John Campbell, Gene Regal, and of course owners uh, George Siegel and Brittany Farms. Track record and national seasons marked for Life Sign here in the fourth annual Miller Lite Cleveland Classic, a 151-4 winner for Life Sign.